said there will be a need or there is a need for organized attempts to spread Krishna consciousness. That means immediately a movement. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur didn't start a movement. He just wrote books. His part or contribution was to lay the basis, the groundwork. And also he was the first one who was uh, aiming to preach in the West by sending one of his books end up as in the library of Toronto just looking towards the West, which in itself was absolutely revolutionary because it stated even in the Shastra I heard that the people behind the big ocean, the big water, are lectures. They're just you know, nothing disconnected from Vedic culture. So uh, that idea was there, laid down by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, but President Maharaj first time organized a movement in India, all over the India, which was also very revolutionary, because this, uh, could call it Hinduistic idea, I have my little god at home, at the shelf, whatever god it is, or actually Hindus say we worship the gods, you know, meaning, Somebody, somewhere, who is the supreme, but not really defined idea. As a matter of fact, by the influence of Mayavadis, there was a great thing not to define the idea at all, who is God. There will be, you worship, and you just worship the worship. You express yourself through worship. To whatever is worshipable to you, you know. I think it was Vivekananda who said that all these paths, they all lead ultimately to the same goal, which also was forbidden to define, because it could be that my goal suddenly is not your goal. And then we aren't all one and the same, because you have a different goal, I have a different goal. So better we are all part of the big, big, big cosmic oneness, something. And then it becomes very vague and foggy and and Mayavada is like fog, you know, just darkness spreads and covers everything into one big mush. And nothing is defined and then people are very comfortable because, you know, uh, there will be no danger somebody will actually try to come and organize you or address you to change something what you are doing. Because it's all one with what he's doing. It's all one and the same. It's very comfortable. But the Mayavada idea is so popular. 
because immediately it frees you from any idea that you should follow some authority. So anything you see in the material world, anybody talking, is motivated by this, even in an atheistic sense. All one and the same, and you know, it's called you know some universal democracy where we all select individually our own goal. You're fine. You worship your deity. I'm fine. I worship my deity. I'm also fine. I don't worship anything. That's also fine. It's all fine. And this is expressed in various songs and literature. And, and, but the basic under, underlying idea is the same. It's quite simple, actually. Defiance to any sort of authority or organized attempt of anything. So it's very popular, of course, because it makes you to a little god on your own who will define his own life, his own, uh, you know, speculative, uh, uh, what is this called? Uh, uh, the state is secular, secular state. That means the idea of religion is completely separated from the management of the state. You know, it's like, yeah, you worship. You can do your religion, fine, but it's like all these schools we see here, Muslim schools, we are in an area where you could call it multicultural idea area, but these schools will be not allowed in Denmark if they wouldn't teach that in Denmark everybody is allowed. But we are in Denmark. So that means the Muslims also have to learn about Danish Queen or whatever. Or they have to basically bow down to the Danish constitution which says that we are all one and the same. You are Muslim, I'm Christian, I'm Hindu, well, it's all the same. No, it's not all the same. So into such an atmosphere, Prabhupada coming with no money, no uh, any other means as a spiritual ones to change anything, he did this amazing thing. He just changed people's lives in such a way they were not only accepting spiritual authority but they were dying to follow it that's that's absolutely revolutionary how do you achieve such a thing those they try to follow in these footsteps and want to preach they know how difficult it is to convince somebody about something at all and how even difficult it is actually to uh, even it's stated on every page of the scriptures we are reading that it is not just a concept which we may sometime in the future. The sages of Naima Sharanya, Sharanya are quoting the authorities. Yeah, but that's not me. I have nothing to do with this. Now I am sitting here in Denmark and I will define and decide how I will conduct my life, including spiritual life. But that's the dead end that already ends there. Because, you know, <laughs> this one gentleman today, in the morning he told me, you know, by feeling that there's some pressure of authority, I cannot be myself. My answer was instant, no. Instant, no. He was shocked. How can you say no and defy what? I cannot be myself? No, because you don't know who yourself is. Yes, in Krishna consciousness there is an original thing where we gradually, by becoming purified, understand what we really are. But we are not there yet. And we cannot just define ourselves. We read, this is the spiritual soul. I am not this body. I am part of Krishna. Great! I understand! Yes! I read it! No, I don't understand anything. My understanding will be demonstrated in a way I act, relate to other living entities, how I claim that to be mine, which is not mine, how I understand my place. And to understand my place, we need somebody who tells us what our place is, because we don't know. So that's why the word disciple comes. And disciple comes from the word discipline. There's some discipline, there's no need of a disciple. There's no need. This is the 
Pope Prabhupada attacked in the Christian community. He said, we have nothing against Christians, not at all. When asked, you know, what he thinks about Christians, he said, I came to America to not stop Christians being Christians. I came to make them to have better Christians. And of course, if you think you are the best Christian, you find such a statement quite challenging. So first of all, we have to understand that we will be defined according to the level we are capable to follow the authority. Then immediately, there is such an uneasy feeling, I have to follow some authority. I have to follow somebody who will tell me what to do. <laughs> Very unpleasant feeling. And then, rightly so, people have doubts. And they should have doubts. Because we are not encouraging blind following. We are encouraging to investigate who is an authority. What is the qualification of an authority? You know, there is even called the rhetoric dogma that only Prabhupada was the authority. This was already going on during Prabhupada's presence. <laughs> there were those who told Prabhupada, I don't like this ISKCON. And it was mainly because of this one single reason. There was just too much authority going on. Prabhupada, I like only you. Prabhupada challenged back immediately, he said, I am ISKCON. You don't like ISKCON, you don't like me. Now, of course, then immediately to be correct, we have to assume or state very clear, clearly that we hope ISKCON is Prabhupada. <laughs> it's one of my godbrothers sitting next to me in a lecture, listening to a lecture from another godbrother in Mayapur, and the godbrother stated very boldly, you know, Prabhupada is ISKCON. And Iskon is Abu Bad. <laughs> because that next to me whispered discreetly, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I never forgot that incident, even it happened like 35 years ago. I never kind of forgot this. I took it like a challenge. You know, it's like, yes, that's that's our part. To make sure that Iskon is Prabhupada. That Prabhupada is Iskon, you know. That's clearly stated. But if we are really representing Prabhupada, oh, that's a long way to go. We are trying. He and <coughs> this was going on even in Prabhupada's presence. You know, Prabhupada said also, so many people say Prabhupada said, Prabhupada said, but I didn't say it. Because those days, if you want to state something, you have to say Prabhupada said. Otherwise nobody will believe you. There was not even that much knowledge of Shastra going around as today, in an academic sense. Not at all. You could say the time I joined, at least in Germany, hardly anybody knew the philosophy. Hardly anybody. It was, they didn't have it even clear, the difference between Prabhupada and Adolf Hitler. It was quoted, Adolf Hitler said because he makes such an impact on German people. So when you want to preach Prabhupada in Germany, you have to consider how, how expert Adolf Hitler was. You know, <laughs> just, <laughs> there was no idea. But there was just one idea. Prabhupada is coming. Prabhupada is coming. He's coming and we have to do everything better and we have to clean up the place. And Prabhupada is coming. This was all about the ISKCON. Prabhupada is coming. So everything was centered around the personality of Prabhupada, which some may define today as being uh, naive, fanatical, or what they call personal cult. Personal cult is to worship an idealized person without knowing who it is, without being able to follow even his instruction. Actually, you don't care. Even. You just idealize something like a pop star. People don't care really. Who is that pop star? That pop star just embodies something to them, which is addressing usually today their lowest instincts and feelings. So, <laughs> so that's good. He is so degraded, so profoundly degraded. He, let's study his uh, art and his work and his words and his statements. And, but that indicates the same thing. People want to follow. Whatever a great man is doing, the small man will follow. So, the question is, who is the great man? 
So we are accepting all these things. People are striving here and there. They are discussing great authorities. You know, uh, what we, this ice hockey player said and this, this fool said. And all the time they are stating something. They are quoting actually all the time. The question is, who are you quoting? So therefore, everything was sent down Prabhupada. And from there, gradually, the Shastric concept, okay? the understanding of the Shastra. There was no Shastra in the beginning. There was just Guru. And then came Shastra, and then some idea of Sadhu. So Guru, Shastra, Sadhu, that's how we should conduct our lives. But it starts with Guru. Without Guru, just jumping into Shastra, it can turn out to be very offensive, or let's say theoretical, because you are unconsciously jumping over the line of previous predecessors and teachers. It's like, for example, somebody goes in a school and he says, I don't want to listen from a teacher. I want to know what Einstein said. <clears throat> and I want to know what they teach in a university. No, no, no. First you go through the basic school and you learn. And then you upgrade your level of learning up to the point you may really... It's interesting actually when I, I never was in a university but uh, I spoke to the devotees who go, you know, who know these fields and uh, the level of teaching and learning is very different there. Like in the early days in a school there is relatively a very strong idea of discipline, ideally. You know, because it's small children. So, you know, sit down, get up, now we go here, now we go there. You know, this is for the lower grades. But on a university level, then because it's assumed that that student is already interested in a special field, he wants to learn, so the atmosphere is far more relaxed. As a matter of fact, the teachers sometimes, they have a practically friendly relationship with the students. There are even schools who try to do this earlier, not in a university. They try to do it, you know, to stimulate the interest of the students, you know, and make them to, a, to a, you know, people with initiative, not just the passive data consumers. So all this can be translated into Prabhupada's preaching. Because Prabhupada steered up, first of all, the interest in this completely confused, conditioned souls to inquire into spiritual life. Then he defined what spiritual life is. Then he started to answer questions which were not even asked. And he trained gradually his disciples more and more to represent Krishna consciousness means represent him. So without that you know, training, personal training by Srila Prabhupada, we would very easily be diverted into something which we see today, that people can divert into. Their own line of learning, their own line of interpreting the Shastra, even, their own line of understanding what is Krishna consciousness. You know, and this was, you know, at least in Srila Prabhupada's presence, completely unacceptable. Prabhupada said, as soon as you start to say, I think, I believe, or in my opinion, <laughs> Prabhupada, you can close it down. It's pretty authoritative attitude. What? That's what I heard today in the morning. I cannot be myself. No, you cannot. Because you don't know who yourself is. But I, I read what myself is. Yeah, that's one part. <laughs> you can read anything. I can also read, you know, about the secret life of butterflies, you know, that doesn't need, uh, it doesn't make me really uh, deliver any knowledge. I mean, maybe never saw a butterfly in my life. I can read cookbooks, but it doesn't make me to an expert cook. You know, it's a good start, but it doesn't make me to an expert cook. So Prabhupada made this incredible achievement that he first of all introduced the real knowledge, dhyana, but then also he gave us a process how to come to a point of realized knowledge, vijnana, which is actually the real knowledge. And that he did by creating a whole wide range of practical engagements. He was even criticized for that. 
we are doing so many things in ESCON and we are always preparing and organizing and doing and, and arranging and building and constructing and doing this, managing and all this and then collecting money and all these things which were considered even by some of us as being rather mundane. No, no, we should cultivate our understanding by, by because there was one problem. Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj was called walking in Mexico. So uh, you, could, you could get the impression, this pure devotee knows so much. So we should also know so much. No, no, that's called copying, that's not called following. And Shri Prabhupada in that context was no, appeared like somebody who is more like, a, what? Printing books and running here and there and checking out the prices of the book printer. And, you know, with a book printer and then, uh, then later on organizing whole movement and uh, it's not like a, it was considered kind of mundane, big mistake. And totally against the Shastric statement that everything done for Krishna is of transcendental nature. There's no difference between studying and doing. There's no difference. But of course, if you don't study, you forget what you are doing. You know. And if you don't do anything, you just study, well then you don't find yourself. You will never understand the body you are working with, because that you find through the action. Like you may think, you can convince yourself about all kinds of ideas. People have ideas. I'm a very subtle and gentle person. Really, what do you do in a moment of when you do something and you cannot do it? You get angry, agitated. Or what happens when somebody can do something you cannot do? You get envious. What is practical tests? It happens to us all the time. You know, the, the, what happens when you come in a, why do you speak when you come in a situation like Arjuna? You know, he, 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 middle of the battle, fighting, fierce battle. How can you be a soldier and a devotee simultaneously? You know, for a person who got this Jnana idea is completely a mystery. No, you have to first stop fighting, then you sit down, and then you study, and then you become a devotee. Not the Prabhupada. Prabhupada showed us very practically. You see, you learn, you do. You know, you, you, you hear, you hear, you do. But you hear, and then you hear. Mm. Yeah, I mean, hearing is also transcendental. It is devotional service. We are worshipping Krishna with intelligence. By understanding, yes, that's also devotion, of course. But Prabhupada brought it even more to a next level. You do. Practically. And practically means in this world, you are dealing with matter. Everything is three-dimensional. <laughs> you bump into it. Then there is Adi Buddhic, Adi Atmic, Adi Devic. You know, all kinds of influences on you all the time. Sometimes people say, I wish I would not do anything. I just want to sit somewhere and be peaceful. But even that doesn't work. You will not be peaceful just by sitting down. So this is how, again the whole idea introduced in the name of spiritual life. You must be completely peaceful. You must smile. And do nothing. You have to be inside not outside. And that inside and outside, Prabhupada completely defeated. Because in Krishna consciousness, inside and outside is the same. There is no inside and outside. There is no this duality. This is what he showed us, practically. So therefore devotees, this movement exploded in such a way. But it was all of course centered around the fact that everybody was very eager to accept the authority of Shri Prabhupada. Not everybody. <laughs> everybody claimed at least and aimed for that. However, when he was really confronted with the authority of Shri Prabhupada, problem started, of course. Immediately. And you can see it in Prabhupada's letters. And he couldn't work under him. He couldn't work with him. And therefore he wanted to be somewhere else working with him. But then he turned out. He doesn't he cannot work with him either. Then he wrote, Dear Shri Prabhupada, I cannot work with him either. 
And then Prabhupada said, okay, then go, you know, from Hawaii to, you know, somewhere. And from that you go to somewhere. Until it turned out, this devotee cannot work with anybody. So finally he left Krishna consciousness. Because it was not the problem you cannot work with him or under him. It was the problem that you want to be God on your own. Then, sorry, we don't have a movement for little gods. It's not the international society for my own God consciousness. It's the international society for Krishna consciousness. And it's a very liberal society. Any devotee has right to ask questions. You think it works like this in the material world? Ah, ah. You work in some company and the boss tells you, everybody has a right to ask questions here. What do you think? You know, ah, forget it. Shut up. Work. Otherwise, fired. No money. And fired means no money. You want money? Work. And be careful. And of course, seeing the power of worker union and keeping the Shudras under control, the Vaishyas are quite smart. They develop a system that you can express your opinion.